Hello. In this video, I'll continue the discussion on parallel and transformers. So in this case, what happens when you have an equal turns of ratios, basically? So let's just take a, a simple example here. We have transformer one, 22 MVA with an impedance of 7.91%. So that's magnitude and the resistance is uh, 0. 32% and reactance is 7.9%. So transformer one has a de-energized tap changer, which is basically in order to change the taps, you have to take this transformer out of the service. That means you can only change the taps, you know, uh, you know, while the transformer is de-energized. And uh, <clears throat> typically with de-energized tap changer, you know, typical, I say typical, but because there are some variations, uh, you have like a nominal tap, for instance, so nominal, then you have two, 2.5% taps above and two, 2.5%. So that's kind of typical. In other words, you can adjust from nominal, you can adjust the taps once, that's 2.5% or twice, 5%. So you can do that above nominal or below. You wanna raise the voltage the voltage, or or decrease it. But again, there are variations of, like you can do three taps above, one tap below, it's system base, you know, so. But anyway, uh, so transformer one, let's assume the tap is set one tap ab above nominal, that means it's 2.5%. Transformer two, same MVA, uh, same impedance, except the transformer two is set at nominal tap. So the turns ratios do not match. So there is a, you know, a formula for calculating the percent circulating current. And I, I took this from, from the Bloom book, you know, but there are other books, you know, that it's a, it's a common uh, formula, you know. So to calculate the circulating current, you know, which is a, a percent, you know, in percent of full load, for instance. So it's the difference in the voltage between the two transform times 1%, basically 100% divided by square root. Then what you do basically, it's kind of like you're putting the resistances on the same base and reactances on the same base. So it's just divided by the impedance, you know, the combined transformer so you take the percent resistance plus from transformer one plus the mva of transformer one divided by the mva of transformer two times the resist percent resistance of transformer two you square that plus then you take reactance of transformer one plus the ratio of the mvas times uh, the reactance of transformer two then you square the entire quantity so if you plug in the numbers, so the voltage difference in this case is 2.5%. So then you just apply basically the, you just plug in the quantity. So you end up with 15.8%, 15.81%. So there is another approximation. If you don't wanna like use resistances, reactances, especially when transformers are large, you know, reactants will be, impedance will be, very close to reactants. And also when you have the XR ratios are very close, you know, you can use this approximation. It will, the approximation will be, but what I mean by approximation is this method here will be very close to this one here. So what you do, you take the voltage difference basically in percent divided by the impedance of transformer one plus the ratio of the MVA times the impedance magnitude of transformer two. So you plug in the numbers. So you can see, you know, kind of the results are, are very close, you know. So the approximate method kind of gives this similar results. And typically the two methods will be equal when both transformers have same XR ratio, so reactance to resistance ratios. So we calculated, let's just say, the circulating current is 15.8%. What does that mean is before the transformer is even loaded, 
you know, the transformers will see a circulating current, which is 15.8% of the rating of the, of the transformer, you know. And that's because of the voltage mismatch, you know, caused by the turns ratio. So, so that's very, very important, you know, to keep in mind. So the two transformers combined, you know, they are, you know, each transformer is rated 22 MVA. So if I, uh, you know, two of them, 44 MVA, 15.8% of that, that means the transformer, before you connect the load, you just energize the high side for instance and low side is not connected to the load yet you will see 6.95 mva worth of circulating current you know so that's very important to know that means you know the transformer loading will be limited to so the the capacity of the transformers is 44 mva but you have to subtract the circulating uh capacity you know so so you know so the you know circulating current you know has some consequences you know so what happens is the circulating currents you know they do not e exit the transformers and hence they don't go back to the system you know they just stay trapped within the transformer loop, you know, which is they flow from the high side through the low side and back, you know. So circulating current will cause overheating, especially if the transformers are fully loaded, you know. So I'm just going to draw a very, like, kind of like single phase format just to avoid cl uh, clutter. So let's say this is a transformer. This is the high side. This is the high side. Let's call it one, two, transformer one, transformer two. This is the low side, one, low side, transformer two. So now let's assume we connect both transformers in parallel. So, you know, you, you will energize the high side, but let's say the low side, let's say there's a, a disconnect switch which is open and this goes to the load so that means the current that will flow so the load current here is zero because the switch is open so the load is not connected however because of circulating current some current will be basically just circulating here so it's going to go from the high side to the low side back and forth basically so you just kind of keep, uh, you know, circulating within the transformers. And so it's going to, you know, once you close this switch here, you know, properly, you know, because you switches, you, you know, that's not the subject of the, of this, uh, video, but you have to close this switch properly, you know, because it, you know, it has to be designed to handle the load also charging current, all that good stuff. Otherwise you have to open a breaker first to allow the switch to close and you, know, you, you close this, the breaker, you know, but that's not the subject of this video. So you will have uh, circulating current and if the transformer is kind of, if the transformers are loaded close to their nameplate rating you know so you're gonna you know the circuit current will cause overheating so so it's very important to to make sure the turns ratios match you know before you parallel transformers and in this case just for simplicity simplicity purposes i only talked about the de-energized tap changers uh you know like especially uh distribution type transformers uh, typically, distribution substation transformers, typically they have low tap changers, LTCs, low tap changers, which in which case uh, you can actually make the taps while the transformer is carrying load, you know, so you can make them, you don't have to take the transformer out of service to, to change the taps. But typically, you can control 
uh, any mismatch, you know, through the, you have like controls, you know, each LTC will have a controller, but then you can make one as the master, the other one is a follower. As the taps change, you know, they make sure that the, you know, there will be no circulating current, you know, and there, there are different ways you can kind of manage that, that mismatch, you know. But for simplicity, I just kind of talked about the dinner just ta uh, tap changer, you know. So that was it for today's video. Thank you.